I'm not quite sure. And my, unfortunately, my connection is going down. But what you can say will be all important. Uh, attacking five sources. Uh, there's one over there. Uh, so, so time I'm a tiny geek, okay? I grew up reading lots of time-based, time books, you know, things, uh, science fiction, lots of movies. Slide. <laughs> Is that good? good combination of things. Where's the Robert Heinlein? Yeah, it's very interesting stuff. And yes, I do have a TARDIS here for those of you who that has to do with time of some sort. So, cruising through Slashdot a while back, I suddenly saw this NTP glitch, which set time back. And I started asking the question, what was the impact, where was it? And I started looking at this pretty heavily. Um, I saw that uh, Sands put up some little short thing, yes, this was, a, this was a problem, kind of downplayed it. We saw a discussion on Active Directory, and how much of Active Directory domains had problems, and it disabled Kerberos and authentication and other things. And I said, hmm, a time problem, I have to check this out. So, detail the event, if I from uh, uh, Naval Observatory here? <laughs> Just checking. I have this. So, um, Everybody knows take and talk. Matter of fact, take and talk are the most common, if you do a search, it's the most common reference, recommended NTP server to connect to anyone. So I found this kind of interesting. Um, what the problem was is um, take and talk when we were mad. They essentially uh, shipped it back 12 years. Less of is a problem, isn't it? So the collateral damage is that um, apparently while this was taking place, and I'm still going through the mapping process. By the way, this is an early part of the research I'm doing on this. Thank you. Um, as I went through it, I found that a lot of organizations really didn't have a strat one or a strat one zero, but they were doing certain things. November 2012? Yes. 17. Sorry. Um, so, I found it kind of interesting that a lot of people were referring to these as, as themselves as Stratum 0 or Stratum 1, but they were actually Stratum 2, they're using other sources, and I started asking, what are the, some of the other questions? Well, the collateral damage issues is a, a default configuration built by D, built across uh, all of our uh, Linux boxes that kills NTP if it has over 1,000 seconds. Shit. We're going to talk about how to maybe exploit that. So, I went deeper. This is a week's worth of research, searching, things like that. I found that a PBX, they wouldn't tell me what type of PBX, but apparently this PBX went mad, and suddenly from the 70s, digital 70s, that's kind of strange. Um, we also had from this CTI group, I'm not sure who they would be, um, we also had multiple uh, servers synchronized, uh, Kerberos problems, AD authentication, people trying to get in through uh, VPNs, all kinds of things. File write errors in your cloud service, their authentication service, I found that very interesting. And also we saw a bunch of Juniper routers had problems. Um, and then also discussions with friends living in this area. We have lots of friends at, at Nova Hackers. And it's interesting to have these discussions to say, do you remember this or can you pull logs on this? It was interesting how many people increased their help desk calls by fourfold for the staff trying to SSL in. 
or their creds, their, for their uh, certificates for their web servers suddenly were not valid. Or all of a sudden their DNS cache went to zero. So everybody in the world had to go up to root to do queries. Kind of a problem. I also found that at this time, we had a hurricane going up the east coast, and we also had a storm on the west coast. So what I did was I eliminated them from the discussion because that would be too evil to actually do a time attack and actually impact the electrical grid on the east coast and west coast. While something's going on, that would be too evil for even me to uh, think about. So what I did was I found two locations that were isolated from a weather standpoint that had a weird problem, but they were never able to describe why it was a problem. It's one of those magic problems. A, a um, screwdriver fell with the electrical grid and magically the west part of the west coast, including San Diego, went black, you know, things like that. Um, it's interesting, I'm trying to find some more attribution. I'm, I'm, the big thing is to Google on news issues, and Google isn't always the best source for news issues in this particular space. So what I'm doing is going down all the critical infrastructures. I've gone uh, down water and electrical. I still have eight more to go to see what the effect is. So this should be real interesting once I finish it. So then the other question I said, okay, which one of you saw this and said, okay, this is cool. So I found out my old friend FX presented it and said, ooh, on an ad out list and discussed it. And then said, turning back the time, expired certificates, we all already knew that. Um, and then he made a comment in the presentation in the video that this may be the first throwdown on cyber war. Okay, drink, if I ask, I said cyber. Yeah, she actually has the word cyber. Okay, drink, I, I see you over there. Have your shot, man. No more shots. Joe needs a shot. shot. Yeah. Joe needs a shot. <laughs> what really concerned me was when I started doing searches on a lot of public sites, I started ending up with this thing called message not available. This started showing up every place I was looking with different queries. I had to actually go to source files. <laughs> Thank you. And query. Double shot. Cheers. Double shot. <laughs> so this was this was kind of interesting, and I also noticed this um, around a lot of particular uh, internet sites is that a lot of information was deprecated. So maybe something's going on. I don't know. Um, I have not contacted them, so there's no conflict of interest, but I found it kind of interesting. So, very quickly, within one week, Google made this big announcement that they had this new TrueTime API, and they don't use NTP anymore. They actually use an atomic clock, which, by the way, are very cheap right now. You can buy an atomic clock chipset for uh, for about twelve hundred dollars you get under two grand which is pretty cool and also GPS location by the way one of my other research projects is to find and exploit um, the GPS to actually shift time but we'll talk about that maybe in the next presentation because that's pretty cool too um, so here's the behavior for NTPD um, when you shift time NTP NTP dies it kills itself. And then the operating system said, damn, you died. I got to restart you. And NCP <laughs> says, look, I've just changed 12 years. And it accepts it. And that becomes the standard. When? OK. Well, I started thinking about, well, if I was doing a pen test or if I was doing a whatever, um, I would say, wow, this would be this could be useful. You know, it would be nice to have an SSL certificate suddenly expire from some set of websites, right? Um, so I found out that um, if you allow DNS, IP, DNS spoofing, uh, you can actually set the time. I'm going to show you an example I was using my Android phone and some other devices for. Um, also because, okay, this is another drink. 
Did you did anybody notice I didn't say IPv6 throughout the whole thing? <laughs> okay. Where well, are we? another place. <laughs> oh! Oh, look at that! Two shots. Fill that! Fill that! <laughs> um, because NTP doesn't have what they call happy eyeballs, which is what a web server has, or web browser has, it doesn't try to figure out V4, V6 transport, and then figure out A and quad A records. It only does V6, looks for quad A records, and then single A records, and V4, and whatever. So you have a race condition here. That's kind of time, right? So you have a race condition here. And I don't have a lot of time to talk about some multicasting, but that has some interesting implications, too. So Android behavior. So I said, hmm, Android, fun. I have several. Um, what can I do with it? So when I turned the GPS on, I suddenly noticed that NTP was being queried immediately. Hmm, what could I do with that? Then the GPS actually dealt with it. So I did a denial service. I basically uh, uh, routed the NTP query to 1.7.0.0.1. It failed, and then my GPS was never able to pick up. So what I did was I then turned around and lied to it. I said I was six years ago. Suddenly the GPS came up when it succeeded, and I was not in this area. I was someplace else in the area. So I found that kind of interesting. Um, so NTP spoofing can make your location be someplace else, especially during the initialization of a um, uh, location based stuff. So another thing is I had this crazy CO program, okay, I tracked my sleep, I would get a lot of sleep, can you tell? Um, so um, I said, hmm, let me use my Wi-Fi and spoof this. So I told it that I was going down to 1978, and all of a sudden, do you see the date? Look, how old? I wasn't even born then. Okay, so this is really concerning. But it actually should, the application shifted back to 1920. So that was pretty interesting that we can shift time that far, and unfortunately I don't have time to go through it, but there's actually four different time representations based on the application, based on the protocol, based on the operating system, and there's a lot of applications that don't have crossovers, don't understand it, and because of it, they misrepresent this, which makes the time shifting even worse, makes it pretty impractical. So then I started looking, this is, a, uh, this is part of the research, hopefully for a DEF CON or Black Hat speech, um, going down all the wireless time protocols. So one of the first things I did was I called up the phone number to get time, and that's still both a dial-up 300, 1200, 2400 baud mode, um, and I also have the time synchronization. Yes, I know, I, I saw that. Um, but then we also have, uh, radio signals, multiple frequencies, that actually put out pulses on a regular basis. Except there's one problem. None of them all fed cable. Would this be a problem, especially if you could look at the top of the data center and go, wow, look, they've got an 800 megahertz um, receipt for blah, blah, blah technology. Wouldn't it be cool if I happened to sit here and actually transmit that signal out? Do you think it would mess things up? Maybe. You're not recording a head shake. There we go. Um, protocols. These are just the four major protocols. There is actually another one, PTP, um, that we go into extreme detail with. Four minutes. Yeah, three, two, one, contact. No. <laughs> I have ten. <laughs> Good man. It's about time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, these are some of the these are the different protocols. Please don't use time protocol. Don't use daytime protocol. But guess what? Our Internet of Things, IoT, you know, whatever stuff, uses BusyBox. What does BusyBox use? 
time protocol. Here's a 32-bit, unsigned, <coughs> unauthenticated, doesn't do any checking. This could be bad, maybe. So anyway, um, starting next week, uh, I'm actually going to be fuzzing all these protocols to see both client and server if I can start breaking. Tell me how to exploit something. Actually, I did back here, but I talked very quickly about it. Tell me again. <laughs> Watch the video. Here, let me go back in time. <laughs> Those three. Right, I got that. Uh, and it worked very well. And that worked very well. That was basically a wireless access point the NTP modified, which was pretty fun. Um, and that right there, I uh, got access to a RAM and realized that that was pretty broken. Um, so, what I did was to actually understand and create a framework around this so I could write a serious academic, maybe more like a Matt Blaze academic versus the other academic. Um, <laughs> type presentation, what I did was I started looking at what the time periods are that could be exploitable and could have benefit for the attacker. Well, thank you. <laughs> so I started thinking about it. Wow, for minutes, um, Ele uh, Active Directory has a 15 minute timeline. So if you can shift the minutes, 15 minutes, and you can do it once, uh, once every minute. So you basically shift forward, shift back, shift forward. If an administrator is logging in remotely from a, say, VPN, some sort of SSL, you know, uh, like SEC, whatever, they have a little bit of a problem because your user authentication will never actually take because the certificates can never actually create a start and end time. So I started thinking about that. Certificates, certificates are very fun. Chrome times, what if I turned around and I never hit midnight? Wouldn't my log fill up? Couldn't I overwrite my log? Couldn't I force my log if I went back and forth to zero out for the next six weeks? Um, so then I started looking at production stuff. Um, by the way, do you notice the thing where it says production, milliseconds, financial transactions? Uh, there's a congressional discussion that this could be the cause yeah. of the flash. Another one. Oh yeah, do it, do it. Why do it? Why do it? Here's the here's the type of attacks that I'm doing research on right now, which is how do I go forward and what is the impact? If I go backwards, what if I do long timelines? What is the impact on the processes? And also, if I do short timelines. Can I actually meet the limit, as an example, of Cisco routers so many hundreds of milliseconds before action can write a syslog? How about if I can retime re it so that I can actually never write a syslog for a specific incident? So anyway, this is the research and... Hey, wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. I'm out of here. Freak four. I'm not there yet. Come on, man. I had six. Actually, I had nine. Yeah! I had nine. Take your shot! Yeah! Sorry, host. Yeah! 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 Why are you up? Oh. Um, I'm assuming that was the reference. So, so next up is going to be Wendy, and she's going to be giving the talk that's on the screen there. So just before everybody clears out, so tomorrow, what time are we all going to be back here for Fire Talks? Whenever the fuck I wake up. There you go. What? How much did you drink? I don't know. Whenever I wake up. Yeah, it's...